A morning drive in the countryside for Vince Cable, except the business secretary wasn't driving, and nor was the engineer with him. The car was in complete control. The business secretary today announced government plans to allow driverless cars on public roads in six months' time. The technology of these vehicles is already there. I mean, you already have vehicles that can do automatic braking, automatic acceleration, uh, automatic parking. I mean, these things, you know, making drive, driving easier and safer. But the, the big breakthrough will be linking this up with satellite technology so that whole fleets of vehicles can be managed in a more efficient way. There are two parts to the plan. First, the government will look at existing laws and regulations around driving to allow autonomous vehicles. And second, they will hold an open competition. Cities and research organizations can bid to hold pilots to test the driverless car technology on the road. We all know that our daily commute is unique amongst everyone else. We experience different things on the road. So it's getting cars onto public roads and starting to gather real world experience that will get a better understanding of the technology and the public will get a better understanding of the cars. Driverless cars offer benefits beyond just putting your feet up behind the wheel. Cars driving closer together and being able to park themselves could ease congestion and they'll also bring more independence to disabled drivers. But in the race for the driverless future, the UK is already behind. Japan and Germany have already trialled driverless cars and Sweden will be next. In America, Google has driven over 700,000 miles on public road. In California, it's completely legal to drive an autonomous vehicle. It's one thing to be driven around a closed circuit like this in a driverless car, and even then there's the odd hitch. It's another step into public roads as early as next year. But the final stage of mass market driverless cars is going to be some decades off yet. Even in this controlled setting, we had a slight mishap. Excuse me, sorry. And it's such technological hitches that might give the public pause. Don't like the idea, can't see how it can be safe, and um, I would just, you know, avoid those cars really. I think you, you feel safer if you've got some contact with something. Still, the green light the government gave today is the first part of the journey towards a driverless future. Tom Cheshire, Sky News.